Now, for years, Windows Server domain controllers have supported a feature known as RODC. RODC is a read-only domain controller. Uh, and it was kind of funny because uh, back in the 1990s when we had Windows NT Server, you had what was called a PDC, a primary domain controller, and you had what was called BDCs, backup domain controllers, and the, the PDC was writable and the BDCs were read-only. And then Microsoft, uh, when Windows 2000 came out, they made this announcement that all domain controllers are now writable. So it was a pretty big deal because it meant that you could sit down at any of your domain controllers and essentially it would replicate to the other domain controllers. Um, not too long after that, a few years down the road, Microsoft released the concept of what is called RODC. RODC is read-only domain controller. And the idea is that we can set up a domain controller that is not writable, that is only read-only. But the question is, why? That's probably what you're wondering. So I want to I want to kind of explain that a little bit. So to, to help you understand that, I'm going to pop open another drawing here, and we're going to take a look at some different locations. So, for example, perhaps our main location might be in New York City. All right, New York City. Uh, and then maybe, maybe we've got, we'll just say New York. And maybe we've also got another location, which we'll say is in... How about Texas? Maybe Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Okay, so Dallas. All right, and maybe we've also got a, another location over here in, let's make it uh, Birmingham, Alabama. I'm just gonna put Berm for Birmingham, Alabama. Okay, um, and maybe, you know, you've got some connections that connect these offices together, some, some wide area network connections that connect these offices together, and you've got domain controllers in each one of your locations. Uh, we'll say New York, we've got domain controller in New York, maybe a couple domain controllers in New York, all right, and maybe a couple domain controllers in Dallas, all right, so that'll represent those. Now, we're going to say that Birmingham is a relatively new office, and it's a very small office, okay? So, whereas New York, maybe we've got like 500 employees, um, you know, we've got different departments working there. Maybe in Dallas, we've got like, I don't know, we'll say 300 employees, okay? But in Birmingham, it's just a small, let's say like a sales office, okay? So this is really just a sales office where we have salespeople maybe that that meet with um, different customers. And perhaps maybe there's only like, I don't know, we'll say 10 employees that work there. And there's not even a full-time IT uh, st uh, department or full-time IT staff that actually works in that Birmingham office. Okay, so this is where we get into why ROD-C might be beneficial, okay? First off, you have uh, IT people that work full-time in New York, IT people that work full-time in Dallas. There is somebody there monitoring domain controllers and managing everything in those uh, locations uh, for us at all times, okay? But when we get into our Birmingham office, it's just a small office. It might even be that it's it's not well monitored. It's not, uh, you know, again, there's no IT people there monitoring anything. They're not managing everything and keeping everything safe. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more dangerous to, to put a full-blown domain controller in that Birmingham office. But here's the problem. Computers that are logging on in Birmingham, let's say that these, uh, this box here represents one of the client computers, that client computer, when he wants to authenticate with the domain controller, currently he's having to cross over to New York using the, the company's WAN connection or whatever in order to do that. And maybe users are complaining that it's slow. So we could, of course, put a full-blown domain controller and set it up over in the sales office in Birmingham. But at that point, um, you got to remember something. These domain controllers are all writable. If you make a change to one of them, it's going to replicate back and forth, right? Um, that means that if we were to put a domain controller, a full-blown domain controller in Birmingham and something got corrupted,
because there's not IT staff there monitoring it and managing it all the time. That could replicate to New York, and next thing you know, it's in Dallas. It's replicated across the entire domain, and it could corrupt the entire domain. Okay, um, so a RODC would be a good fit for this style of uh, environment. So instead of putting a full-blown DC, we're going to put a RODC out there. So we're going to put a server. We're going to make it a RODC server. Okay, so it won't be a full-blown DC. RODCs are only read, they're read-only. So that means that replication, when it occurs, it's going to occur this way. Okay, now the other thing that's great about RODC is that you can have it cache the passwords of the, the 10 employees that are in the office. It does not have to know everybody's password. So there's a security um, scenario there as well, if you think about it, to where... Um, I'm going to allow this ROD-C to cache the password of the 10 employees that work there, but, but no other passwords. So if somehow this ROD-C server got hacked, it's not going to know anybody's admin passwords or any of that. Okay. Um, now you can, you can control that through using the, the password objects, uh, password caching feature that ROD-C has. So we get to control what ROD-C is going to know. And again, replication will ne never occur out here. It'll always have to occur incoming to RODC. So when things change, it's going to replicate to RODC. RODC does not ever get to replicate anything out. So again, if it gets corrupted or something like that, it's not going to do any damage. Okay, we get to control all of that. All right. Um, so ultimately, RODC can act as a, as a way of you for you to set up a, a domain controller that's read-only not give anybody access to it. In fact, it doesn't even know, um, it doesn't know any admin credentials. So you may say, what happens if an admin visits the Birmingham office and tries to log on? Anybody that tries to log on, if RODC does not know their password, then RODC will do pass-through authentication. It means it'll send the authentication request up to New York, in this case, and New York will authenticate the user and pass it back. So if anybody tries to log on and it doesn't know their password, you, they can still get authenticated, it's just a little slower. Else, we could manually tell RODC uh, that we want it to cache a certain person's password. But ideally, you don't really want it caching like admin passwords and things like that. Because of the fact that this server is not thoroughly being monitored uh, as much as the others, because there's not an IT department or there's not IT staff working there, then ultimately what you're doing is you're, uh, you're making it where um, it only knows about the 10 employees that work in the office. Okay. So guys, that is the idea of RODC. That is how RODC could benefit us. It's not used super duper often in the real world. There are certain circumstances where it can come in handy. But um, you can put DNS on that as well, by the way. So another thing that's handy is uh, you can have DNS set up on it and uh, your employees can query using DNS and all that right there with RODC as well. All right, but remember, RODC is read-only and it's only going to be used in certain circumstances. This is John Christopher. I hope you enjoyed that video, and I want you to know that I'm trying really hard to grow this channel, so I hope you'll give me a like and a subscribe. Also, if you'll check the description in this video, I've got a link for you that can show you how you can get access to all my different courses. I have lots of different Microsoft certification courses that'll help you pass your exam. All right, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope to see you again. <laughs>